Hey everybody, this is Eric with Harris Aerobic in Granbury, Texas, and today I'm going to take you through the steps of identifying and troubleshooting a faulty high water alarm float and getting that replaced. Now, maybe you're a newly licensed aerobic septic technician or you haven't seen this issue before, but I received a call a couple of months ago from a client who wanted a second opinion because his alarm kept sounding, and he kept calling his service folks out, but they said they couldn't figure out what was wrong because the pump seemed to be working and everything looked okay. It turned out to simply be a faulty alarm float that took less than 30 minutes to replace. So two days ago, we arrived at this location to do a routine inspection and found the high water alarm light on and audible alarm silenced. Opening the pump tank revealed a system that was pumped down with the alarm float hanging from the discharge line, so clearly we were not in a high water situation. Now, I actually installed this control panel just a few months ago after the original hoot control panel began to have recurring issues. Now, for those of you who really know what you're looking at, you'll notice that the timer is set in timer mode with all of the pins in the out position. That is because the on-demand function of the timer is inoperable, so placing the timer in timer mode and pushing out all of the pins basically puts the system in on-demand mode in timer mode. Uh, I simply haven't had a chance to replace this timer for the customer yet. So that's a great tip to use and I'll cover timers in another video. At this time it's a good idea to verify the alarm wiring colors coming out of the control panel to make it easier to identify in the tank. As I stated, this was originally a Hoot system, and Hoot had the habit of having their wiring come from inside the tank and coming up under the risers. This is why the wiring is spliced inside the tank, a habit that I am strongly against if there is a junction box available, but there isn't on this system. As you can see here, I have already disconnected the pump at the quick disconnect in the tank and pulled it up to the edge of the riser. Ironically, I also recently replaced the pump on this system, but the only wiring I didn't redo was the alarm wiring, which is just barely peeking out under the edge of the riser near two feet down. This is going to be interesting. Whoever wired this float had the best of intentions attempting to seal up the nuts with duct seal or something similar like R-Flex, but it was extremely soggy and ineffective. I like to use marine grade liquid electrical tape myself. I had to use a little ingenuity at this point. I didn't want to disconnect the nuts and have the wires swing down under the opening, so I zip tied a white wire to the alarm wires and draped the white wire over the edge of the tank to give me something to keep a hold of them with. Now that I have the float disconnected, it's time to test it. The best way is to get some fresh wire. Take a moment to cut off the nasty wire, strip everything back so that you know you have a good connection. Okay, so with your float in the down position and hooked up to your leads on your multimeter, the multimeter set to ohms, it should be an open connection when the float's down. When you lift the float up, you should be getting resistance and you should be getting noise. This float is bad, so we need to get a new float. This is the noise that it should be making when the float's up. That's what you should see. So here we are testing a brand new float just to show you what it's supposed to do. You got your meter set to resistance. We've got an open connection because our leads are connected and the float is in the down position. Float comes up, you get resistance. Down, open, up, resistance. This is how you test a float. So now that we have the new alarm float wired in, again, I like to fill the wire nuts with marine grade liquid electrical tape. Once this dries, it will completely seal up the vulnerable exposed wire ends. Two things wreak havoc on the electrical connection in an aerobic system, moisture and sewer gases. Don't make these connections without sealing up the nuts and don't use regular electrical tape. Regular electrical tape will do the opposite of what you want. It will literally trap moisture, doing more damage than good in a septic environment. Okay, so we have the new alarm float hooked up. It is connected to the discharge line, but before I drop it back in, let's go ahead and test everything. I did turn the breakers back on in the control panel. Uh, the alarm light went out, set the alarm for run, and now let's test. 
and we do have an alarm. All right, now we just set the discharge line back in place and get the uh, lines all wrapped up nice and neat, and we're done. Once everything has been tested, simply drop the pump back into the tank and connect it back to the discharge line. Coil up your wires neatly and secure them. Secure your control panel. Turn all alarms back to run mode and we're off to the next system. But first, let's look at that bad float. This is the actual float that I just took off of this unit for being inoperable. I brought it back to the shop. I cut it in half. I wanted to show you what it looked like on the inside and why it failed. So this is a mechanical float. Uh, here's your weight, your arm, and your switch. Now on this switch, you can see that little white button on the left side. Right now, that button should be pushed out, but it is depressed in, uh, which is actually showing why it was saying it was an alarm even though it was uh, in the down position. So as you can see, it's just starting to peek out right there. So what happens is, when you get water, it gets higher. This ball comes down and closes that little switch, pushes that little button down and activates that switch. It closes this circuit and allows the electricity to come through the black and the white wires for the alarm to sound. So in this float, what has happened is, you can see there's some moisture still in it. Still some moisture in this cap. When I got it cut open, uh, some water came pouring out of it. Moisture has gotten into this switch right here, and where that little button is, uh, there's a little metal spring, and that spring has rusted and is no longer pushing the button out, because right now it's showing that there is um, a closed circuit right here, even though it is clearly not closed. See, there it is, it's starting to, starting to peek out a little bit there. So this is how you can have a high water alarm on your system but you open the tank and see that there is no high water in the system. It's because this switch is messed up and it's allowing uh, voltage to go through those wires. I hope this video has helped you better understand how an alarm float functions, but better yet, how it can malfunction and throw the system into a false high water alarm. Find us at harrisaerobic.com on Facebook and Instagram, and as always, give us a shout or message me here if you have any questions.